Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for joining our webinar. Today's edition is Collaboration and Work Management Across Teams. I'm Jenny Ward, and I will be presenting today's webinar. Thank you for joining. Today's agenda will be covering uh, specifically Microsoft Teams and it being the central location for team collaboration, hence the name Teams. It is as, exactly as it's described. We'll be talking about the tool features and how it can help you collaborate uh, across your team. Specifically, we're going to focus on project integration with Teams, and that would include project schedules, project risks, showing project status reports, and even the planner version of your project uh, so we can integrate those features into the tool. There's several different styles of work across organizations. Uh, it's kind of a funny way to say it, but there's the me work, the stuff that I do every day focusing on the tasks that I need to complete uh, that don't involve others things such as my status reports. I don't really need to go to anybody else to complete those. They're my projects, so I have to get those done. Checking my calendar every morning when I come in to see what meetings I have coming up. Different types of administrative tasks would fall under that as well. Then there's the we work, working with my peers and other groups for ad hoc projects and longer term communities of interest. And then there's department resources where structured resources for large groups of people focus on a common goal. Uh, that would be working on our upcoming sales and what our next demos are going to be. Webinars are a good example of that, where we work together to decide, okay, what is our webinar agenda for this year? What are people interested in learning about? And we put those together for you folks so that you can come and join and learn and get to know us and we can get to know you. And there's company connection, finding and consuming content that connects me to a whole company and success of the business. Within Microsoft Teams and the modern work management suite, we have this ability to integrate all of these different um, areas of the M365 environment. And so we can use that as the central location where we're working all day, every day. I can tell you that for me personally, uh, even just as, as recently as a year ago, that focus for me was Microsoft Outlook. I'd spend all day, every day in Microsoft looking at my tasks, looking at my next uh, calendar invites and coordinating all of my emails, ensuring that I was keeping up to date on everything that I needed to get done. And then for chat at the time, we'd use Skype for Business, which was the predecessor to Teams chat. Now we can do all of those things in one location, which is Teams. Um, I've said this on previous webinars, I'm not gonna lie, I was particularly resistant to Teams, but now that I am in it all day, every day, I really do think it's a fantastic tool. Some of the th features that it provides are threaded persistent chat. So that would be the replacement for Skype for Business or whatever chat mechanism that you guys are using. You can have open group or private one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, I have a constant thread with two of my coworkers, Laura and Cindy, where we're just looking to find out you know, what's happening throughout the day. One of us has a question on Power BI or on Teams. We post it there and we can go through and uh, see what we're looking at and what could possibly be the problem, see if we can help one another out. From a fun perspective, there are emojis, stickers, and GIFs, just like you'd put in any chat on your iPhone or Android device. And uh, you can have a laugh over the different GIFs. There are quite a few that you can find in Teams, so that's a good time. There's mobile voice with video calling. I can tell you, I do not have a landline. Um, when I talk to my colleagues, I do it through Microsoft Teams, and I can take those calls on my iPhone as well because I have the Teams app installed on my phone. And then there's calendar integration. When I have a meeting, I can go right into Teams and I can join the meeting from there, right from within the Teams environment. 
you can communicate the way you want. As I said, you can have the individual conversations. You can have conversations within your team's channels. You can see that there's a, a, a channel here for our store por portal in this example, and then actual conversations. So if it's specific to this topic, that's where you can put your chat. The benefit of that is that any member of that team can then see that conversation and um, be brought up to speed on the information you're sharing. We have several different teams. Uh, a good example would be tools best practices. So when Microsoft, as they often do, adds new features and uh, benefits to their products, we can go and share those. And we do that quite often. I went and looked for one just this morning and uh, to find some tips and tricks on Teams was what I was looking for this morning. And you can have all of the different kinds of information. You can have a, a sales channel, an HR channel. Those channels can have permission set so that only the members of that team can access it. So in that sense, it works like SharePoint does, except it's more of a collaborative environment, much easier to connect with your coworkers. You can customize it as you like. You can pin important files, tons of third-party apps that can be added to the environment. There's all kinds of apps. We'll show you what that looks like. So even if it's not a Microsoft product, you can add it into the Teams environment. This would include examples such as Salesforce, for instance. And it's built on Office 365 security. So it's going to meet the global compliance standards. If you have an Office 365 admin, he or she is the one that's configured Microsoft Teams, so you can rest assured that security is of the utmost importance. Within Teams, you're going to be able to add these additional apps like we talked about, Planner being one. And the beauty of this is that if you have particular tasks that you want to add to a particular area of expertise or a topic, a channel or a team, you can create a planner plan just for that team. So we're going to look at this through a project perspective. We're going to look at my Sunflower Farms project, and we're going to see how I've integrated planner with that project so that you can have a handy to-do list right there within planner in your team's environment. The beauty of planner, particularly for folks who are in the project online environment, is that Planner comes automatically with an Office 365 license. So if you have a team working in Project Online, a, a licensed group of project managers, for instance, but you have another set of users who really don't need to be in the Project Online, project online environment all day, every day, then the beauty of Planner is that you can still assign tasks from your project but you can do it via planner so that folks who aren't in project or don't have project expertise can simply go to planner, a much simpler tool that will simply give them their to do items in the particular categories that you like, the categories being the buckets. So you could have your buckets being particular teams. If you have research and development, you could have a research and development bucket, finance bucket, or you can set the buckets to be the phases of the project. Here is the design phase of the project. Here's the implementation phase of the project and all the folks assigned to that phase. It depends on how you structure your work breakdown structure and how you want those tasks organized, but there's a world of possibilities in terms of how you structure that in Planner. If you were interested in integrating Planner with project, although Microsoft does allow you to link to Planner, it doesn't allow the direct integration of creating planner tasks from project tasks. There is, however, an add-on integration hub feature that PPM Works installs for you. So if you are interested in that type of integration, please reach out to us. We'll have uh, some contact information at the end of this webinar. So you can reach out to us or you can simply email us at info at ppmworks.com. We do have a specific webinar that uh, I hosted, in fact, that speaks to that project to planner integration. If you want to learn more, you can check out our YouTube channel and you can see that information there as well. I'll get you the link to that YouTube channel at the end of this webinar. 
Now, once you have all of this information into your environment, here comes the fun part, my favorite tool of all the M365 tools, which is Power BI. So the thing that's great about Power BI and uh, project specifically is that there is a pre-made Power BI project online content pack. That is a pre-made set of very handy reports that we'll look at that is designed in such a way that once you have your projects published to the project online environment, those reports literally are done for you. All you have to do is add that app and the Power BI project online content pack into your Power BI service environment, and those reports get created automatically. Um, here's just a quick sample of what some of those reports look like. You can see overall project status here for our particular project. Here's another example of a project status report that's pre-made. And then there is the portfolio report that includes the total count of projects, the count by status, projects that are green for status and red for status. And then we have project count by pillar alignment, the types of projects in particular. These visualizations, as they're called, each one of these elements is a visualization in Power BI. These can be configured however you like. If you want to set these to show projects by project type or projects by uh, phase, you know, how many projects do we have in execution and close? How many are just starting? You can show these pillars in that way. Whatever works best for you and your organization to manage your portfolio, these can be customized to do that. I'll get back to this slide in a moment, but now we're going to go into the demo and we're going to talk about the team's environment. So here I have a Sunflower Farm team and you can see it defaults to the general channel. I only have one channel on this particular team. However, I could create additional channels. If you look at this one up here, we've got new store opening. We have the general channel, which is the default channel that's built in. But then for internal work, we have a financial private data channel, which is just as it's described, a private channel. A good example for this would be at PPM Works, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. So we do work for Microsoft for clients. So we have many different clients we're working with all day, every day. So we could have a client channel. If say Sunflower Farms was a particular external company, then all information could be shared with members of Sunflower Farm. I can add guests to this channel, employees of Sunflower Farm itself, so that they could sign into Teams and have this information. However, as is with any project, there's stuff we want to talk about internally at PPM Works regarding that project, making sure that we're doing everything we can for the client. So we could have a private channel where we need to save information. Hey, Bob, don't forget to do this for the client tonight. This is due tonight. They're really expecting it by tomorrow morning. Please make sure this gets done. That's not something you want to share with the client, it's something you want to make sure that Bob knows and understands or a particular file that you need to share. Hey, Bob, I found this typo on this presentation. Can you please fix it before we deliver it to the client? The client doesn't need to see that you ever have made a typo in your life, so we leave it on the private channel. Additionally, in the same way on each of the channels, there are places where you can save files. As you can see right now, I only have my Sunflower logo, but if you're looking to share status reports with the client, this is a great place to do it save you on emailing those files, added security as well. There is a wiki where you can just create, start laying out your proposed marketing samples, for instance. You can just use it kind of like a notepad, but uh, it's even more set up like a web page would be. And then here we get to the fun stuff when we're looking at the project schedule. Now you may be familiar with this project schedule because you're used to working in project desktop. So in this case, project professional is where I prefer to do my project management work if I'm actually working in a detailed schedule. However, 
I can do the same thing here in Teams. As you can see, I've got my, my uh, dates here, okay? And all of the fields that I want to see in here, I can go to the project, I can go to the task tab here, okay? I can change the view if I wanna look at a different view. And what's great about this is if I go here and say that I need, no, we had a delay, so we're gonna move, we're gonna move the project, let's go to the project tab, and we're gonna move the project to instead start on the 12th, we're gonna bump it out a month, okay? So we bump that project out a month, we're gonna publish it. This is a small project, so it'll only take a moment to publish. You can see that status down here. And then when we go back to Teams, once that completes, then we're gonna be able to refresh this. There's a refresh here, we'll see if that has refreshed already. There we go, and it's updated to 312 now as the start of the project. So this is gonna be up to date based on uh, whatever is the latest update, but you can also edit the project here. Now, as you can see, I've got a warning here that it's checked out to me in another session. Okay, that would be my project professional instance. I can also see that schedule here on project online. Okay, so I'm in the PWA environment here in my schedule tab in the Sunflower Farms project, okay? And again, I get the same warning here, hey, this is checked out to you in another session, but I can still see what the latest information is here. Now, the way that this is added to Teams is kind of interesting. So if we go here to this and we copy this URL, this is actually the way that we get this information into Teams. So if I go and I add a tab here, there is no project tab, believe it or not, okay? But we want it to be showing project for the web anyway. So the way that we do that is by adding the website. So I can, I'll just add another tab here. I'm gonna call it PWA, and I'm going to add this tab. It defaults to posting to the channel on that tab. So if there are updates and alerts, you can have those set. Okay, you can see that now this is a duplicate of the tab I've just created. It is in focus on content view, but I can turn off that focus on content button and I can see the entire project online environment. So from here, if I wanted to look at projects, I could look at the entire list of projects here, any to which I personally have permission. And this will only work with a project license. Okay, so this is something where you would need a project license to accomplish this. Something you'd not need a project license for would be the risks list on the project because this exists in the project SharePoint site. So if we go back here, we can see the project site here. Okay, again, this is just a Teams view of Project Online that I've added as a tab right in Teams. Simply by using the website link here, I'm just going here, I'm selecting website, and I'm adding that URL to the PWA environment. If I go here to the project site, what happens is it opens up the project site. Here's risks and issues specifically, but if I want the team to be focusing on risks and adding any risks, I can just specifically put a link to that URL, which I've already done here. Okay, so you can see that this view here is the same as what I now have open in PWA. Okay, it's going to default back as you see, it default defaults back to what I set the tab to, which is good. But once I'm in there, if I want to configure that, if I want to navigate, I should say, to that site, I can do that again and I can look at it here. Okay, so we talked about the planner integration hub here. If we wanted to integrate this, this is not integrated right now and that's fine. You can just use this as simple tasks. You wanna let your team members know they need to get done. I am logged in right now in our demo environment as the domain admin. You can call me Doe. <laughs> and these tasks are assigned to me. So I've just got these set as reminders to myself. If I wanted to add another task though, I've got zoning in here already. Let's set marketing brochure to printer. I want to configure that. I can set the due date. We'll set that for the 29th. And we're going to assign that to Denzel. Okay. And then we're going to add that task. Okay. 
So Denzel is in here. Just as a very small uh, item here, you'll notice that my environment happens to be a dark setting. I can change that theme back to the default if you prefer it that way, okay? Just so you're not taken aback by the fact that I prefer the dark screen. It's just a little bit easier on my tired eyes. So I set that to dark. There's high contrast also that helps with um, visually impaired individuals, okay? So all different options here. We've got the planner tasks. Now this one, again, was configured with a URL. You can just add planner here. And OneNote is an app that I added. So you can see it's here, planner is here. You can use these features. You can add a SharePoint link. You can add a PowerPoint viewer and Power BI, okay? Now we looked at the project status in our PowerPoint presentation when I first started. But as you can see, you can pull up that content pack right here in Teams as well so that it defaults to the Sunflower Farms project, okay? Once, you, I should say, when I say default, when I first added this tab, I did have to select Sunflower Farms, okay? So all of the projects in, in our environment, again, to which I would have permission, are showing in this report, okay? I then set it to Sunflower Farms, so that would be what was present in the tab. And then this is the tab that we already added. We also added one note. I didn't actually go to this one. Not a whole lot of information in here. I may have copied some text from Wikipedia just so you can see what the tab looks like and you can expand this so you can set new sections of the tab. But if you're used to working in OneNote, this is a great place to do it. Works just as well as OneNote does. It's just, again, allowing you to leave your focus entirely on Teams and in teams throughout the day. If you have any questions regarding what we've presented today, and particularly the integration between Project Online and Microsoft Teams, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can uh, find us at um, info at ppmworks.com, and that would be the best way to uh, get questions answered specifically. Um, we do have a YouTube channel, so if you uh, cannot make a, a one o'clock session, we typically have them on Thursdays at one o'clock. If you can't make that, then the webinar is available after the fact on our YouTube channel, so you will find that information at youtube.com slash c slash ppmworks. We've got lots of great information there, that um, integration um, with Planner, uh, the one that I talked about, you can learn a little bit more about that. We do have some upcoming upcoming webinars uh, in another uh, week or so. We've got modern Gantt chart reporting on 312 mobile app for project online task updates, which is really handy for clients who have uh, lots of project managers and technicians on the road. We've got Microsoft project integration with Teams, another version of, of this report uh, this webinar coming up with a little bit more detail. And then we have report pack or project for the web. Um, project for the web is Microsoft's newest um, tool for project portfolio management. It's a lightweight tool, really handy for teams who don't need the very intricate project scheduling, but need something a little bit more than Project Planner offers. And so there's uh, reporting for that specifically. And so we'll get into that. You can see all of these webinars and the information at ppmworks.com slash events. We hope that you will reach out to us. Like I said, info at ppmworks.com. You can use free planning services and meet your local Microsoft project specialist. Uh, I cover the New England area, at, as does my colleague Jock. And uh, we have specialists all over the country. So um, if not a remote session to set up an on-site or a remote, remote demo, we can come and come to your place of business and get to meet you and do a workshop, help you learn a little bit more. You can connect with us on LinkedIn at ppm-works-inc. Our site is ppmworks.com where you can also find our events and our blog. And again, please email us 
at info at ppmworks.com. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. I hope it's been helpful and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.